welcome to ITS Tactical. Today we are going to go over how to make a type 1 paracord bracelet. Um, I first saw this, this type of bracelet while we were at SHOT Show this year. Um, we were meeting with Raquel from Triple Lot Design and she had an awesome bracelet with a different, different type of closure. But um, it really got us thinking this is a size of bracelet that I would wear on a regular basis. Um, you may be very familiar with the type 3 paracord bracelets that are out there. This is a little bit smaller um, for a smaller wrist if you like, but you know, this will work for men, women, kids, anybody who wants to wear it. Um, just to show you the difference between, to give you an idea of the difference between the type 1 and the type 3 paracord, you can see how much thinner the type 1 is. And um, just to go over what's on the inside, you have the seven strands of cord on the inside of the type 3 versus just one strand on the interior of the type 1. Um, I'm going to be starting out with five feet of the type 1 cord as well as a two feet section as well. My two feet section is going to be the, um, the inner core of the bracelet and the five feet is, is going to be the working portion of the bracelet. So. I'll get started and show you how to make this. Okay, we're going to show you a close-up of the Type 1 paracord bracelet again. Um, this knot on the end is a lanyard knot, which you can check out at the uh, Knot of the Week series on ITSTactical.com. We're not going to show this on this particular video. You're wel welcome to reference that other video because it is kind of a complicated knot. Um, today what we'll do to close off this bracelet is feature just a double overhand knot that's a little more simple, but um, check out that previous video if you're interested in, in this exact type of knot. Um, you can also see down at this end we've just got um, a loop. The, the size of this loop is, is going to be important, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, again, I wanted to show you a close-up of the, the difference in size of the, the Type 1 and the Type 3 paracord. You can purchase both of these types of paracord at ITSTactical.com in our store if you're interested in making uh, this bracelet or something else. Um, another thing I wanted to point out that you can use type 1 cord for that you're probably more familiar with is um, using it as a dummy cord to secure anything that um, is sensitive, such as securing the lid to the uh, Liberty bottle if you have one of those. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you get started to make the bracelet, uh, you're going to need to make your cuts. The first one is your what I'm using anyway is the, the two foot cord. You're going to want to burn the ends of your paracord a little bit so it doesn't get unravely on you while you're working. Um, and then you're also going to want to singe the ends of your um, five foot cord as well or whatever length you, it is you're going to be working with. So the first thing you want to do is take your shorter length of paracord and you're going to want to fold that in half. And this is where you're going to make your closure loop, the loop that's going to fasten over your knot at the other end whenever we're finished. So kind of pay attention to what size knot you think you might, might want to have um, at the end of the bracelet because that's going to be important. You don't want to have your loop be too big, your knot be too small, and then you're not going to have good closure once you're ready. Next, you're going to want to take your longer length of cord, also fold that in half, find that midpoint, and this is what you're going to tie around your shorter length to get started. Basically, what we're going to do is just tie a simple overhand knot, and we'll be able to get going. Pull that real snug. Make sure your loop is about what you'll estimate you'll need. And then you're ready to get started. So this is what it looks like after we've secured our longer rope paracord to the shorter one. And I'm going to turn the back side of this knot over 
so that I'm working on what looks like the smoother side. And let me get this started and then I'll turn it around a little differently to show you. Um, you can see this rope, this side of the cord is a little higher. That's the side I'm going to start with. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going to fold this over in front of the mid midsection. I'm going to bring the right side of the cord down. Pull it around so that I have the end. And I'm going to pull that up through the back side of that first loop that I made. One thing to keep in mind is you want to keep your tails of that middle section pulled to the front. And then you're just going to tighten that up. You might have to work it a little bit to get it going. And we're going to be constantly pushing up this bottom bar here as we move along, but make sure you don't pull too hard because you can end up pulling this secondary rope, this longer piece, right off of your, your core if you don't watch it. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out that I've learned as I've been working with this is um, how do I know what step I just took um, if I have to put it down or I get interrupted? And so what I watch for is this bar on the side. And um, this vertical bar, whichever is most prominent and the one that's next to the bottom, that's the side I'm going to continue with as I come back to my project. So I'm going to make that loop, sideways loop. I'm going to bring the other side forward, behind the tail. And in through that loop that I made, just like that. And then I'm going to pull it snug. Okay, we've zoomed in so I can uh, show you a little bit more detail. Um, I'm going to make a couple more wraps and then we'll pause while I finish the bracelet and then we'll come back to show you how to um, close it off and end it. So basically, where I'm starting again is determined by this lowest vertical bar here. I'm bringing my cord over in front to make that loop. Bringing the other side down and behind the tails. I'm going to get the end of my cord and bring it through that loop forward and pull it tight. Make my loop, bring the other side over and down, get the end of my cord, bring it through, and pull it tight. Okay, we're going to pause here so I can finish the bracelet, and we'll be back to finish it off in just a second. Okay. I came to a stopping point um, just by measuring on my own wrist where I thought I wanted the bracelet to stop. I like a, a bracelet to fit kind of snug. Um, so if you can see these center loops, or excuse me, these center cords are the ones that I'm paying attention to at this point. Um, so basically I think that's a good stopping point. What I want to do first is I want to secure these side tails and get rid of them. So I'm going to trim pretty close to the bracelet. And I'm going to fuse the cord into the side of the bracelet just by pushing the lighter while that's hot. That way you're not just keeping the end from getting loose, you're actually fusing it to the side of the bracelet. So we're going to do that with this side as well. Okay. 
And now we're just going to tie a double overhand knot to create our knot for the closure. Make sure those are pushed in while they're still warm. And when you're pulling your, your first knot in, just keep it kind of loose until you get the placement of where you want it. And then just go over with your second one. And you might have to play with this a few times to get it to lay right. But basically you want your second knot to kind of sit over top of the first one and it'll make a larger knot for you. And I'm going to check the length of my bracelet one more time before I chop those off. I think that's going to work just fine. So I'm going to trim these off and fuse them together. This has been how to tie the Type 1 Paracord Bracelet with ITS Tactical's Knot of the Week series. Be sure to check out our Type 1 and Type 3 Paracord on our store at itstactical.com. Thanks for watching.